Good day and happy Wednesday, everybody. Coming at you a day late this week for our weekly uh, seller chats, weekly wine fights. The good news about coming at, coming to you late live is that you can actually come in today after watching this if you watch it before you come in, or maybe you just kept like thirty seven seconds of it as you're you know doom scrolling through your Facebook feed, um, and you can come in and have the fights tonight instead of having to wait till the next day, as I usually film these on Tuesdays. Uh, but yesterday I was not feeling 100%, so I thought I'd wait to film. That all said, we are off to Washington State this week um, and hitting up an all-time favorite. And I do believe this has become kind of a, a yearly flight. Pretty much every year, at least last year, we, we have, we've we done this exact same or similar flight from the ever-amazing Gramercy Cellars, which is a, a house favorite producer here at Second Glass, uh, Celeste has had Gramercy on the menu, I think, from day one, um, and has poured the Syrah by the glass on and off, you know, depending on the season, and always brings in the Rosé and their peak pool, so why not feature them now that they've been released for the season? So, without further ado, let's get into it. Gramercy Cellars, we're going to start out with peak pool. So a little bit, a little info on Gramercy Cellars based in the Columbia Valley, specifically more like in the Walla Walla region. Um, it's founded by Greg Harrington and his lovely wife, Pamela. You know, Greg was, is, you know, considered one of the great American sommeliers, one of the, you know, early master sommeliers in the court of sommeliers back in, I want to say he got it in the early 90s. Worked for some incredible restaurants, you know, most most notably, I think he worked for, I know he worked for Emerald Lagasse down in uh, oh. New Orleans. I believe he worked for a short period of time with um, Wolfgang Puck. Don't quote me on that, but if I remember correctly, I do believe he worked there for a short period of time. But, you know, lived in New York for a long time um, and happened to live near Gramercy Park, which if you guys did not know... These, a Gramercy Park in New York City, there is fencing, and these are the fence posts that go around Gramercy Park. Um, I really only know that because I was in New York not long ago and walked right past Gramercy Park. and was like, oh, that's where that comes from. Uh, but, you know, wanted to, he wanted to get into the production side of things, and he always dreamed of kind of setting up shop somewhere and, and starting to make wine, him and his wife, and they sort of were just like, you know, if we're not going to do it now, we'll probably never get around to doing it. So they set up shop. Um, out in Washington state with an original focus of like, you know, creating Rome varieties, which is they, they do and they continue to do. But, you know, I think a lot of their recognition came from their Cabernet production, um, which they make an incredible Cabernet Sauvignon. Washington is very much known for that. But to this day, it's the Rhone varieties and Southern French varieties that are hold true, dear and true to Greg's heart. So starting out with Peak Pool. So Famously from down in the Languedoc region, if I'm uh, southern France, Rome, don't quote me, I can't exactly pinpoint where Peak Pool de Penne is, but this would be, if I had to have a head-to-head -head battle, greatest oyster wine of all time, it would be a head-to-head -head battle between Peak Pool de Penne and, or just Peak Pool and Melon de Bourgogne from Muscadet. Those would be my go-tos, just because they're salty and fresh and citrusy. I've always found that for me, Peak Pool has a little more fruit than, than Melon de Bourgogne. So there's a little more brightness, a little more um, stone fruit. And this is an excellent, excellent example of that. Lovely, like kind of apricot, little peach kind of notes, citrus, lots of like sea spray kind of minerality. Mm. Wow. Um, brand new vintage, this just landed two weeks ago and man is it showing well bright fresh really good texture i mean my mouth is salivating with how um a, you know vibrant and you know delicious the acidity is on that but there's a really great texture that keeps it from just being like bright citrus and boring like there's a lot going on here mm. so 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 good wow excellent Sorry, I was just waving to my driver who's making a delivery right now. Um, again, that is Gramercy Cellars, their peak pool. Um, I can't remember how long they've made that, but 
it's been, I would say the peak pool and the rosé are like the little darlings of Gramercy Cellars, which is a darling of Washington State, hence the, the tagline for this video. Um, and these are like, these do not represent the core of their production. It's not really what they got into business for, but you know, I believe for a long time these were things they made for themselves because they wanted these delicious things to, delicious wines to enjoy at the winery or to show guests when they would visit. Um, and over time they've grown the production, they've gotten access to more vineyards and more, more vines and more fruit and have been able to up that production so that they can sell it, you know, across, across the nation. And I do believe they export some of this as well. Uh, and the same goes for the people and the Gramercy sellers. So for a long time, they kind of came from, the people came from like one vineyard. Um, and now it's coming from, I think a couple of different vineyards. And now we're getting into the rosé, which would, I would say, arguably be the most sought after for those in the know from Gramercy Cellars. Um, very much based on Provence style, Senso, Grenache, a little bit of Syrah, but I mean, look at that color. That is just, that is a thing of beauty right there. Um, oh, wow. Every year this wine comes out and every year it fails to disappoint. It is so, so good. Um, really lush like watermelon strawberry like raspberry kind of fruit going on that oh so wonderful like citrus minerality a little bit of like saltiness mm. and although wow everything you want that is everything you want in a rosé end of story period that's all you need to know it's a little overcast right now and it's not looking so beautiful, but close your eyes, take a sip of this, and you are whisked away to a sunny beachside, enjoying like some fresh seafood. Um, hopefully you're having some fresh seafood here at Second to Last, and you can just close your eyes and pretend like it's not cloudy while you're hanging out having a flight. I really have nothing else to say about this. It is stellar. It's showing so well right out the gate. And again, this wine landed two weeks ago. So, hmm. Really can't ask for more from that. There is a really distinct, like, salty, like, ocean spray, refreshing, like, quality on the finish that I just want to put a straw on this and drink it all day long. Again, Gramercy Cellars, their rosé from the Olsen Vineyard, so that does come all does come entirely from one vineyard. All right, then rounding it out, we can't do Gramercy Cellars without doing a little Syrah. That is, that is the grape that I, I think Greg would say is the one that made him fall in love with wine. It's the wine that he loves the most. So we got we to gotta show a little love to the man himself. So this is their Walla Walla bottling. They make several different bottlings of straw, as you might have guessed. <clears throat> um, and this is, I would say they, they would put this in the kind of like entry level, not entry level, but the most approachable bottling. They make another one called Lower East which I would say is, is absolutely the most approachable. It's meant for, you know, being served by the glass. It's meant to have immediacy. It certainly is a wine you can age, but you know, the whole point of that wine is to get, to give you something to drink while you're waiting for the other Gramercy Cellars wines to like come of age and be ready to go right out the gate. So, but the Wall Wall is a relatively new cuvee um, that comes from Source Vineyards in the Wall Wall. I think it comes from two or three different vineyard sites. And made in a similar style to like the Lower East. Maybe a little more structure, a little more depth and quality. Um, there is about 1% Viognier co-fermented here. Um, so get a little of that uh, a la Cote Roti style. And you can tell, I mean, look at the, it is not a heavily dark Syrah. It's got some vibrancy. It's got some freshness. I mean, the nose is, wow. And uh, to be totally honest, this is the first time I've tasted the Walla Walla. I don't normally take this wine out, um, so I've not had it yet. So I'm pretty excited to get into this. You know, on the nose, plenty of ripe fruit, good, good touch of richness. Greg is not afraid of using a little bit of new cooperage, a little bit of new oak, so you can smell like a little bit of oak sweetness, but it's not overwhelming. It's very much in balance with the wine. And, in, and instead of overwhelming the fruit, I think it really just lifts the fruit up. Mm. Wow. The palate is so silky. And 
I would say, like, I've had several of other of, of Greg's other Syrahs, and they can vary. Sometimes they're a little heavier, a little richer. So if you've had Grammar Seas other Syrah, and you're like, oh, I've had those, those can be kind of full. They're never, they're never massive wines. I mean, I don't know if it's the 1% of Viognier co-fermented or what, but like this wine has so much freshness to give. Um, it's a little lighter in its feet. This is a perfect kind of summertime Syrah, backyard barbecue. I wouldn't hate this with a slight chill on it, you know? I mean, that, that would just be me if I was drinking it at home. In a restaurant setting, it's going to be served at like cellar temperature, so you're in a good place here when you come into second glass. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. This is a smashing, smashing lineup. All right, again, quick recap before I head out. Gramercy Cellars deep dive this week. Starting out with the peak pool, vibrant, fresh, salty citrus. You know, you name it, it's delicious. A little Gramercy Cellars rosé. The word that you're looking for is excellent. That's what that is. Rounded out, Gramercy Cellars Syrah. And this would, I would say for Syrah drinkers or people who, you know, don't think they're going to like Syrah because it either is too heavy or too oaky or too whatever, you need to get your hands on this because it might change your mind. This is like Syrah for Pinot Noir drinkers. No, it doesn't drink like Pinot Noir, but it's definitely lighter and fresher. And on that note, till next week, be safe, be kind, support local. Enjoy the weather. See y'all later.